Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon, and I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And uh, here it is, guys, here it is. Elemental has the single worst box office opening weekend in the history of Pixar. Yeah, that's so not good. That is a massive Disney disaster. We're gonna talk about this, what this means, what this could possibly mean. And look, this, uh, this weekend wasn't great for the box office. The Flash came in under 60 million, it was like 55 mm -hmm. million. They were hoping it was gonna be a lot more than that. In Elemental, they were projecting between 30 and 40 million. It came in at $29 million. Yeah. Not good. No. So let's talk about all this before we get into it any further. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. You'll get a woohoo if you do. Woohoo! And uh, you know who's not, not given woohoos? Peter Doctor and Pixar. Yeah, they're not getting any woohoos over there. They might yeah. be getting their woohoos kicked pretty soon because mm -hmm. we know what what's been going on. They actually have been uh, firing people who've worked on movies that underperformed at Pixar. We have the director of Lightyear get gone, and uh, I have to wonder if Pete Doctor is not going to be far behind. Well, it won't be today because their offices are probably closed today. But maybe oh, tomorrow, yes. Yes, Monday, yes. Monday meaning they'll get moved to Tuesday now. So here we go, guys. Everybody talking about it. Now, what's so funny is that uh, there's not a lot of spin being put on this by the media. In fact, every major mainstream media outlet is talking about how much of a failure Pixar is. Right, right, and how bad it went. Uh, New and York Times, Forbes, everybody. Oh, and then you had IGN even give it a six, which is low for them, and saying because it was too basically ham-fisted on its, you know, pushing narrative, and the story didn't make sense. Yeah, so we're going to talk about the box office, and we'll talk about the reactions to it, but it's so weird because just a couple of years ago, if a Pixar movie performed this badly, bigots would be blamed. And now they're just like, you know what? We're all out of excuses. And Disney's all out of advertising money. Who are they going to blame so, for this? So I mean, we don't care. Who, who, how would they bigot? How, if, 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 they was, if these characters were coded very clearly in certain ways, they'd be yelling. Oh, yeah. Bigotry. Yeah. But they're not. So that's, you know, they can't on this one. All right. So this has come from Deserto. Uh, single worst box office opening weekend in history history. Um, despite being a household name with countless hits, the company's most recent film, Elemental, has opened at the box office to the lowest numbers of any Pixar film in the modern history of the company. Now, you'd have to go back to the original Toy Story, and even then, if you adjust the original Toy Story for inflation, I right. think it winds up being about 55 to $60 million. Mm -hmm. And that was a new thing. I remember when Toy Story came out, there were articles in the newspaper, because newspapers were still a thing, there were articles in the newspaper being like, should I take my kid to go see Toy Story because I think that an hour and a half of CGI is going to hurt their eyes. <laughs> That's probably true. I thought they'd be more like, I don't want my kids to be afraid of their toys. Well, that, that came up too. Because <laughs> that would be what I would think they would complain about. Anyway. So domestically, the movie only brought in $29.5 million. This number may seem like a solid opening weekend for an animated movie, the film had a reported budget it, of 200 million. It's not million. a solid. Um, that's domestic. Uh, overseas, it was like 15 million. Now, to be fair, that was only in 17 markets. So normally, like when we did Little Mermaid, it was like 31 markets. So you have to take that into consideration. But about $45 million for the opening weekend for a, a movie that cost 200 million to make, not counting marketing, which there wasn't much, yeah. not counting other things, um, it would have to probably do... 400 million to be considered a success or heading towards success. Yeah, I love how they're spinning Break this. Even. They're they're spinning it like um well, it's just an animated movie. Meanwhile, Spider-Man came in third place with an additional 27.8 million. Almost, Almost as much. much. Yeah. Almost as much after it smashed records. We had Mario smashing records. I was going to say Mario beat it, you know, yeah. Not not good. And Pixar, Disney and Pixar were known for this stuff. They were the leaders in this stuff. Yeah. But they pulled back from it and now they're just getting their butts whooped right and left because everybody else is out innovating, out story, you know, doing better stories than they are. It's like the Pixar difference isn't the Pixar difference anymore. No, it's Pixar is just another animation studio. And it's so weird. This is the New York Times calling it out. The very first sentence, Pixar is damaged as a big screen brand. Mm -hmm. um, so that was yes, it. It's, it's, it's kind of interesting to see the media, you know, 
not falling into the same plays they usually fall into. They said it's hard to sugarcoat this, said David Gross, a film consultant who publishes a newsletter on box office numbers. Uh, questions about Pixar's health have swirled in Hollywood and among investors since last yeah, June. Yeah, we've been calling it for a while. Yeah, when Lightyear released to disastrous results, Lightyear was a Toy Story spinoff. If they had stuck to the script, if they had stuck to the Buzz Lightyear Star Command story, that you know was it was an animated series it's the basis of the rides in the disney parks it clearly was the movie that andy watched in the 90s that got him pumped for buzz lightyear not, not what they said not interstellar how could pixar the gold standard of animation studios for nearly three decades have gotten a movie so wrong well it's not just been one it that is that was one that they were thought was going to do well because it was it was from an existing franchise yeah they've been dropping the ball for a while now and this just really like doubled down on how bad it's gotten. Well, this is this is the post Lassiter era of, of Pixar, and you can see what a difference it makes when he's not involved at all because he was guiding all of these movies mm -hmm. all of these years. Oh yeah, a bunch of people left, but yeah, you you got what you 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 have what we have left. You promoted them to positions of leadership, and this is what you get. Yeah, and they got rid of John Lassiter for hugging people. I guess, or something. Putting hand, well, but he put a hand on someone's leg. You shouldn't have done that. Uh, yeah, but so, like, it was, they didn't fire him right away. They kind of let him just fade off. That's what got sunset, me. If he know? did something so terrible, they wouldn't have left him stay there and his contract was up. But that's, you know, whatever. Um, go ahead. They said that Soul, Turning Red, and Luca all did well online, but they said that... Uh, yeah, because it was I mean, it was free, basically. It was included yeah. with your your subscription. I mean... And they promote the hell out of them. They right. had McDonald's toys. They had McDonald's yeah. toy tie-ins for these you know streaming movies. And people were just like, yeah, there's nothing really... Like, I'm just going to wait. I'm going to wait a month or two, and it's going to be on Disney+. Plus. And I don't... You know, here's the problem. Is take my word for it on some of these with the numbers. I don't think Soul, Turning Red, or Luca would have done fantastic in the theater anyway. No, I don't think they would have. I think Turning I, Red wasn't in the theater. I think it was limited release... I'm, I'm just saying, I mean, I don't think any of these movies would have done really well either. Yeah, they said attendance for Elemental over the weekend reinforced the brand problem hypothesis. It was Pixar's worst opening weekend result in the U.S. and Canada. The previous bottom was Onward, mm -hmm. which was $39 million. And Onward, I want to point out, opened, it's 46 million just for inflation, but it opened when the pandemic fears were ramped up to the, because it, it was only open for like a week or two, and then they closed it because they shut everything down. Right. So people were afraid to go out because they were afraid of getting sick. It was right before they did the shutdowns. So my takeaway from this is in just two or three years, We've gone from 39 million to 46 million. That's how high inflation is. Holy mm -hmm. shit. Oh, it's bad. Holy shit. <laughs> but um, they said, yeah, they have to reestablish Pixar as more than just a Disney Plus, uh, Disney Plus fodder. The company held a premiere for Elemental at the Cannes Film Festival. At the very end, again, when the critics were getting ready to leave, they they held a screening for Elemental and it got lukewarm. Applause. So Pete Docter's blaming it, and he's not completely wrong, that they've trained audiences to wait for Disney Plus for Pixar, which is, I, that is true. But the thing is, people said, we said that for a while, and then Disney and them tried to argue before that wasn't true, and Pete Docter tried, didn't he try to argue before that wasn't the case? Yeah, yeah. And now, oh, that's my excuse. It's, it didn't fail because of us, it failed because people are just going to go to Disney Plus, they think it's going to be on Disney Plus. Yes, you have a point to an extent, but no, it still failed. It's still, yeah. I don't think we were going to watch on Disney Plus either. It just wasn't something people were interested in. No, and the New York Times kind of pokes a hole in that. They said, you know, families turned out in colossal numbers for the right. Super Mario movie and, and Spider-Man. Yes, yes, exactly. And Mario, they said, well, they'll just wait for, for Disney Plus for Elemental. But it's also, it, Mario was put on streaming pretty damn quick, too. And it still made over well over a billion dollars. Mm -hmm. And it, it was like a month, I think, you could buy it on Voodoo. It and, was like you could pre-order. I think one yeah. place had it, but you had to wait a little bit longer for other places. But yeah, so that yeah, that, that argument doesn't hold water because other animated features that are out at the same time still kicked your ass. So they're talking about how they're letting people off at Pixar. Mm -hmm. uh, Pixar has been pushed to expand into television production to keep the Disney Plus shelves stocked. The higher the volume, the lower the quality said a former Disney, DreamWorks, and CBS film executive, Terry Press. Uh, reviews were mostly positive, but not by Pixar standards. They weren't great. They weren't I don't think, great. no, actually what I saw, the reviews were mostly positive. Now, here's what I saw. People, some people had good reviews, but a lot of people were kind of like, uh, it's pretty, it's pretty, it's pretty, but uh, the story didn't make any sense. 
Yeah. Um, that's what I heard a lot of. It looks really pretty, but the story is like Romeo and Juliet. I'm like, but that's not for kids. A lot of people said kids didn't understand it. Kids were like, kids were like, eh, about it. Your your brand is Pixar Family, which would imply your kids are going to like it too. And for years, they had all these movies that adults and kids liked. Yep. That's what you expect out of Pixar. Now you're doing a Romeo and Juliet esque whatever, and the kids are just like checked out. We had, but it's pretty. We had Nomeo and Juliet. I know, right? You know, and like, that, that kids were invested in that. God. Kids watched. Our daughter loved it. She watched it two or three times. Nomeo and Juliet had more child invest investiture. So, so we were curious. Speaking of Nomeo and Juliet, and that one Disney didn't actually uh, produce it. They distributed the movie. Mm -hmm. I think it was it was less theaters too. If you were theaters, it was in it was only twenty nine hundred theaters in twenty eleven. Opening weekend for that in 2011 was $25 million. And we did the inflation calculator. It winds up being $34.2 million. So it beat it, yeah. Nomeo and Juliet, which everybody forgot existed. You know, mm -hmm. and it wasn't even, again, that wasn't a movie that Disney made. They just distributed the movie. And it was kind of here and gone. And it did better than yeah. Elemental. I mean, I'm just saying, that's not good. That was like a filler. That was something they, they kind of just threw in between their movies and the Pixar movies. Mm. And uh that's what it did. So yeah, this is this is really bad, guys. I mean, this is this is catastrophic, actually. And Disney should be panicking. I mean, they, they're getting it from all sides now. They had their CFO step down. They've got uh, Star Wars and Marvel in the gutter right now. Now Pixar. Now Pixar's well, in the not, gutter. Not now it's been, but yeah. Um, and then, but now the media is acknowledging. The media that, that's the difference. Finally like, acknowledging you know, that they can, it was all excuse, wrong. excuse, excuse, racism, misogyny, blah, blah, blah. And now they're like, oh shit, guys, Pixar's not doing well. If we put a video out like this pointing out the obvious a year or two ago, it would have been like, you're just a bunch of bigots and you want Disney to fail because you like Ron DeSantis or some shit like that. Now the New York freaking Times. Is like Pixar is damaged goods. We've got multiple articles being written by mainstream media outlets talking about how broken the MCU is, how broken Star Wars is. It's not just us. Mm -mm. We were just ahead of the curve. Sorry, this is the new reality. The new reality is Disney is broken. Pixar is broken, and uh, especially if Iger is going to stay on long, you know, past his his uh, tenure, projected tenure. I don't think it's going to get fixed anytime soon. No. I, I'm still waiting to see what they do. I'm still waiting to see because they call it Disney Pixar anyway. They're going to go Disney, all in Disney Pixar Animation Studios. I, I could see them doing that. I've been saying that for how many years now? I said what makes the most sense is just combine it. They did it with Disney Toon. Mm -hmm. They basically took what they wanted from Disney Toon, rolled it into uh, you know Walt Disney Animation Studios, called it a day. I can completely see them doing that with Pixar. Just let's take some people. Take some properties, and from now on, all the freaking 50,000 Toy Story and Cars sequels that we do are coming out from Walt Disney mm -hmm. Animation Studios. I mean, they're doing it with Blue Sky. They got rid of Blue Sky, and now Ice Age is coming out under Disney. So, yeah, that's true. So, I mean, why I, will they just not? I mean, because they said, well, Pixar meant something. Well, it did. Yeah, you found a way to ruin that, too. Plus, Good job, Disney. <laughs> plus, they're on the outskirts of San Francisco. Who the hell wants to stay in San Francisco now? Everybody's getting out of San Francisco. You know, it'd, it'd be a, it'd be a huge relief for Disney, but it's such an iconic building. You know, it's such an iconic building. They actually have a replica of it in the Florida theme parks, Pixar Place. Mm -hmm. But I could see them just being like, yeah, it doesn't make sense anymore. It just doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, guys. We're going to wrap this one up. Yep. yep. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views and rants. And we'll talk later. Bye. Help support the channel. Go to thereef.support and get early access to podcasts, videos, and other content. That's thereef.support.